So now we're going to go through a couple of extra useful commands. So here we have um, git pull. So we've done git push and that pushes changes from your computer to GitHub. But sometimes if someone else has made some changes and pushed it to GitHub, then it's possible that GitHub will be further ahead than your version on your computer. So in order to bring the changes down from GitHub to your computer, then you can use git pull. Um, git diff is also very helpful. That allows you to see what you've changed since the last commit. So if you've done some edits and then you've gone away, you weren't finished, you've gone away and you come back and you can't quite remember what you did. If you type git diff, it will show you everything you've added, everything you've deleted, everything that's changed. So it's very easy to, to see what's different between your current working copy and the last save point or commit. Um, sometimes it's, you might want to remove a file from a local repository and that is accomplished using git rm. Another thing that's also really useful, so let's say if you tried something out and you decided it wasn't working and you wanted to go in a different direction. And so you essentially want to undo everything that you've done. And what you can do is you can type git checkout dash dash dot. So that essentially means um, go back to the previous save point and reset everything. And then another useful thing. So we've talked about taking things from GitHub to your local computer. You can also go the other way. Um, so if you wanted or if you don't want to use GitHub at all, then you can use git init on your directory or your folder. And that allows you to keep track of the history on your local computer without even using GitHub. So you can still go through the git add, git commit cycle, um, and you've got a uh, history there preserved on your machine. So let's go into detail a little bit more about those commands. So git pull, like I said, that will bring changes from the re remote repository, e.g. GitHub, into your local one. And Git will merge the changes with your local version if there are no conflicts. If there are conflicts, it will tell you that. And then it will put um, messages inside your code, which you can go through and uh, correct. And also, if you, like I said, if you want to see the changes that you've made, then you use git diff. So let's say um, I open a file called newfile.txt and I add a line, nobody expects a Spanish inquisition. So if I type git diff now, then it will show the changes between the last save state or commit and the current working state. So you can see below git diff and it shows you that you've added the line, nobody expects a Spanish inquisition in newfile.txt. And to delete a file, so git rm, so that removes files from a working directory. Removals like additions need to be committed, so you'll still need to do git add, git commit. Um, and history is preserved. So if you've, if you've deleted a file, then you can go back to a previous commit and that file will still be there. And in order to undo local changes, then we can use git checkout. So use to reset the working state back to the last commit. So you do git checkout dash dash dot. And that's essentially an undo button. If you only want to do it on a specific file, so the dot means everything here. If you use, uh, if you specify a file name, then it will undo the changes on a specific file rather than everything. So that can be useful if you've only edited, if you've edited more than one file, but you only want to reset one, then you can use git checkout dash dash the file name. And if you want to create a repo on your machine without using GitHub or go start it on your computer first before pushing it to GitHub, then you can use git init. 